So, Disney now officially owns the movie rights to the X-Men. Sucks that they also own half of Hollywood now, but hey, at least the mutants are back where they belong. I'm sure by now you've seen a whole bunch of opinion pieces on the internet about this particular subject. What should Disney do with the X-Men? Should they integrate them into the MCU? Should they keep them separate? What are they going to do with Deadpool? And I'm sure by now you've already heard a whole bunch of hot takes on this particular issue. But you haven't heard mine. And because I know you're all wondering, I am a firm believer, nay, a true believer, in the idea that the X-Men belong with the rest of the Marvel heroes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Here's why and how. Before we really get into the why, we should address the how. How can Marvel integrate the X-Men into their cinematic universe? I've been seeing a lot of videos and articles online talking about how it's really not in the best interest to put the X-Men in the same universe as the rest of the Marvel characters. I know, right? Some people don't want to see the Hulk rip Wolverine in half. I can't believe it either. The mentality behind this take is that even in the comics, the X-Men are kept fairly separate from the rest of the Avengers. Aside from major event books, the X-Men are always off doing their own thing away from the major happenings of the rest of the Marvel U. Rarely, if ever, will you see an Avenger just come out and talk about the plight of the mutants, and rarely, if ever will you see a mutant talk about the Avengers. And that's not entirely true. Yes, for the most part, the X-Men are off doing their own thing, but so is everybody else. Captain America pretty much stays to himself in the Captain America books. Iron Man more or less stays to himself in the Iron Man books. Rarely, if ever, do comic book characters really cross over outside of like the Avengers or books specifically designed to cross them over. And if they do cameo in someone else's title, it usually isn't anything major. And that's pretty much how the movies are now. I'd say aside from Thor Ragnarok and Spider-Man Homecoming, when a character crosses over into another movie, it isn't all that integral to the main plot. There's also Captain America Civil War, but that film was basically an Avengers film. But then you run into the question of how do you integrate the mutants into a universe that previously didn't have any. Surely if mutants existed in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they would have been mentioned at some point. And on top of that, how do you add a group of characters with special abilities who are hated and feared by the general public when you have a whole bunch of other characters in the same universe with special abilities who aren't hated or feared by the public. Well, if we go back to the comics, the X-Men debuted in 1963, almost two years after all the other major Marvel players came about. The Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, Iron Man, the Hulk, Thor, they were all already introduced and walking around existing in the Marvel Universe before the mutants showed up. But you might be thinking, those were the comics. Movies are a completely different beast. And besides, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been around for 10 years now. You can't just add a race of people to a movie universe that's as well established as this. I disagree. I wholeheartedly think that you can add mutants to the MCU and not only will it make sense, but it won't contradict anything that came before. See, the Marvel movies have never really focused on what's going on in the greater world at large. What they do is they laser focus in on the hero and what their journey is for that particular film. They don't really go into what everyday people are doing unless they interact directly with the hero. So it's very possible that mutants do exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's just we didn't know about it because it was never a focus of any of the movies. Oh, but surely S.H.I.E.L.D. must know they know everything. Mutants have been around for thousands of years. How could it never have been brought up all this time? Well, how do we know that some of those people Hydra were targeting in Winter Soldier weren't mutants? Maybe there were mutants throughout history and there was just never a name for it. Maybe they thought they were witches who got burned at the stake, or worshipped as holy men or gods, or even imprisoned and killed during World War II. Maybe there wasn't a word for it back then because not many existed. They were rare occurrences. Maybe over time, humanity evolved to develop the X gene more often and faster. And maybe those who did have special abilities in the past had their stories rewritten in the history books or just flat out lost the time. Remember, in the Days of Future Past movie, they say that John F. Kennedy was a mutant. That's something that can be easily glossed over in a textbook. And plus, the unfortunate truth is that the history and accomplishments of a lot of minority groups are often ignored, forgotten, or just glossed over 
all the time in history texts. That's a real life thing that happens, and if the X-Men are supposed to be an allegory for the struggles of minorities, well then, there you go. But people hate the mutants. They don't hate Captain America, they don't hate Iron Man, they don't hate the other heroes. And yeah, they do. People hate the Hulk because they think he's a monster, not necessarily because he's a mutant. They don't know he's not a mutant. Spider-Man is slandered daily in a major metropolitan newspaper. Hell, there was even an episode of Jessica Jones about this very subject, about people who don't trust those with abilities. Thank you, Captain. I'm pretty sure this guy's a war criminal now, but whatever. I have to show these videos. It's cry by the state. Let's do it. But what does this mean for Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch? If there are mutants all around now, what does that make them? It can make the mutants. Just call them mutants. Just say that Strucker's experiments unlocked the dormant X gene that didn't develop at the right time. And then just have Magneto walk on screen and say, hey, Scarlet Witch, I'm your father. Perfect. There are millions of ways to add the X-Men to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I could sit here all day and talk about how it could happen, what they should do, which X-Men should be included. Professor X, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Colossus, Kitty Pride, Banshee on the good guy side. Magneto, Pyro, The Blob, Mastermind, and Juggernaut on the bad guy side. And in the post credit scene, that's when you introduce Wolverine. But what I really want to talk about is the why. Why should Marvel put the X-Men in their cinematic universe. To me, the answer is simple. That's where they belong. The X-Men have been and always will be an important part of the Marvel Universe. They represent something that none of the other heroes do. They represent the feared, the oppressed, the misunderstood, those who are just trying to live their lives but can't because society won't let them. The MCU doesn't have that. They sort of Touched upon this in Civil War, but that only affected a core group of like 10 people, not a race of millions. They tried to introduce a group like this into the MCU with the Inhumans, and you all know how that turned out. That's because the X-Men are the best version of this story that Marvel has ever created. You can't just put in a cheap imitation of it, even if it's coming from the same house who made the original. And like I said last week, to me, the Fox series of X-Men movies ended with Logan. Where can you go after that story? I mean, let's be real here. They're already starting to repeat ideas. Maybe now we can start to get new X-Men films with concepts Fox would have never dreamed of putting into their movies. Like having them go to weird ass places like the Savage Land and Asteroid M. Maybe see them travel to Breakworld or introduce any of the weird <laughs> that Grant Morrison introduced during his run. I'm not saying that the X-Men need to be introduced right away. I'm not saying that they should tack on a scene at the end of Infinity War to just show the mutants running around. Let Dark Phoenix, the New Mutants, and Deadpool 2 all come out. I think they all come out next year, actually, which is terrifying to think of. That's it. Maybe take a break. Let the idea of the X-Men subside in the public consciousness, and then in Phase 4, that's when you introduce them into the MCU. Maybe towards the end of Phase 4, so you have a little bit more time to develop them and introduce them, maybe in other movies, before you get to your brand new one. The bottom line is, it's time. It's time for something new and fresh with the X-Men. The Fox line of movies have been going on since 2000 and they're starting to become stagnant. Giving the X-Men to not just a brand new creative team but a brand new think tank overall is just the move they need. The Bryan Singer style of X-Men movies just isn't working anymore. Especially in this climate. We've had a good run guys. I mean Fox put out 10 X-Men movies in 17 years. We got four good to great X-Men movies, two kind of meh ones, three Wolverine movies, each one getting progressively better, and even a Deadpool movie for good measure. But now it's time for the X-Men to enter the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's time to now do stories like House of M and Secret Wars and do them properly. It's time for the mutants to come home. What do you guys think? Are you happy with the idea of the X-Men entering the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or are you one of those people who wants to keep them separate? Let me know down below or anywhere on the internet. We got a lot of videos here on The Wolf Den. Tuesday is a games video, Wednesday is a comic book video, Saturday is the backlog where we go through our video game collection and talk about a random ass game from it. All of those debut at 10 a.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash wolfden. Watch it there live and we will be in the chat talking to you and afterwards, Bob will do a stream of some kind. I don't know. I'm usually at work when that happens. Those will all go up on YouTube shortly after and only on YouTube will you find Wolf Den Live, the official podcast 
of this channel. That is, of course, every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern right here, youtube.com slash wolfden. So make sure you subscribe to see all of that, like this video, and share it with a friend, a friend who doesn't think the X-Men should be in the MCU because, let me tell you, that guy ain't right. Or girl, I shouldn't assume. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.